we're not out there to just find things. We're there to learn about the people that lived here before us. I want you to ignore that. Archaeologists and volunteers haul the gear they need to work out on the islands in Cape Porpoise Harbor. Every archaeologist has a trowel, a tape measure. So this is a soil color book which helps us standardize the types of soils we're digging in. Right now, the mud flats are clear, but soon they'll be underwater. What we do uh, in intertidal archaeology is conduct what are called uh, systematic surface surveys. Tim Spar is the principal investigator for the Cape Porpoise Archaeological Alliance, or CPE. What is uh, going on today is we're investigating the possible sites of a English fort that uh, was here in the mid-1600s. Since 2016, he's been studying the 12 islands off Cape Porpoise. The early writings and data is a little uh, subjective to understand because this bar between this island and that island uh, may have been intact four or five hundred years ago and has since washed away. The islands, rich in resources, shield the harbor and land from waves. It's one of the few safe harbors between Portsmouth and Portland, making it an attractive place for ancient people to have worked or lived. This feature right here does have some <clears throat> characteristics of the footings of a <clears throat> early historic building. This has a type of rectangular shape. It has something right in the middle that could have been a hearth for a, uh, a fireplace. At the test pit, Tim and volunteers work to unearth clues. We're looking for evidence of any cultural debris. It could be uh, something like a lithic flake chipped off when, when somebody was making a tool. The work is tedious and requires painstaking attention to detail. It can be very dirty work and on these islands. This, this is liter these islands are literally jungles of poison ivy, so you need patience. There is no hurry in archaeology. But there is urgency. The sites are, uh, as a result of global sea level rise, are washing away. Not finding something many times is as significant as finding something. On this day, Emily, who's a student, finds a shard of glass. It's difficult to age glass. It's interesting, and we are going to bag it. Each find adds to the greater picture of what life may have looked like. With each year, we're discovering that this was a place that was um, attractive to people as long ago as 8,000 years, and uh, right up until when the English arrived in the early 1600s. Usually an area of land surveyed once that yields no artifacts doesn't need to be surveyed again. In the intertidal zone, though, shifting sands and mudflats can unearth new things periodically. You'll scream at the appropriate moment, right? Down the right. Yeah, Sometimes even big things. I was conducting a, a, a midwinter survey and uh, located what appeared to be two gunnels of a canoe uh, uh, peering up through the sand. In June of 2019, a dugout canoe made of yellow birch was excavated from Cape Porpoise Harbor. It was a step-by-step -step process. It was locating it, it was excavating it, it was putting in the conservation carbon-14. And has the evidence started to come together that would uh, suggest that it was in fact a dugout canoe or used by people here that lived here? 700 years ago. Next to the canoe, a paddle was found, still together after hundreds of years. It was really a great feeling. I'm so fascinated by these islands. They're really my soul's home. Elizabeth Kelly Erickson is CPE's lead artist. She worked on the canoe excavation and did the technical drawings. The full drawing actually took 21 hours. Artist sketches are still widely used in archaeology as a more accurate way to document artifacts. Sometimes the light on a photograph is not allowing you to see all the facets and if, for example, if you're looking at a stone tool um, that was made by flint napping, with a drawing you can immediately see where all the flake scars are. Elizabeth has also helped paint a picture of what life might have looked like for indigenous people living in Cape Porpoise. I really wanted to know what it was like 700 or a thousand years ago here. 
what, what it might have felt like to be here at that time. And so I took my easel and my charcoal and went out to do a drawing on the mudflats. Many of her drawings were included at the latest exhibit at the Brick Store Museum. So we're piecing together really small pieces of physical evidence uh, that uh, helps us pull together uh, facts of a bigger picture of how people lived. Looking at the past to hopefully live a better future. The ultimate goal of of this work is if it can help inform us about who was here, how they lived in harmony and close to the earth, and help us to live closer to the earth.